soulmates, an idea that may or may not exist. I mean, I'm trying not to over, over intellectualize, but you only live once. This is the opening line of the play Bright Half-Life by Tanya Barfield, spoken by the character Erica. And I chose it to start the speech because it's just such a captivating line that starts the play. The idea of soulmates, which will play into some of the themes we'll talk about here in a sec. Which my purpose here today is to explore three themes that I found to be prevalent in the play Bright Half-Life by Tanya Barfield. And I want to note up front that it was very hard to narrow down these themes. There's so many really relevant and strong themes that we could talk about. And these are the three that I ended up finding the most evidence for and that I wanted to talk about the most. To prepare for this speech, I read the play as well as research reviews of the play and interviews with the playwright to support the themes that I found. And those themes are labels and how they affect us, the butterfly effect, and the universality of the life cycle of love. Moving to this first theme, we have labels and how they affect us. And my first piece of evidence comes from Tom Williams for the Chicago Critic, a review of Bright Half-Life. Williams says, Erica is the quirky, butch white woman who is attracted to Vicky, an African-American feminine intellectual. Erica is the idealist, and Vicky is the practical one. I chose this quote because the reviewer, Tom Williams, puts several labels on each of the characters, and he labels their personalities, he labels their race, their physical qualities, their intellectual qualities, and these are very surface level observations that he makes, which are effective for review writing and a nice little elevator pitch of the play, but reading the play and watching the play more, I'm sure we realize that these characters are more than just their surface level labels. They are more than just their labels in general. They are real people. There's so much depth to these characters and there's so much depth to each person in this world. My second piece of evidence comes from Haley Levitt's review of Bright Half-Life for Theater Mania. Levitt writes, it may sound fatalistic to accept that every relationship has a half-life, that true love is not an infinite resource destined to endure for eternity. It certainly defies the institution of marriage, whose romantic reputation hinges on this concept of foreverness. A loving future seems destined as we watch their third day rapport atop a Ferris wheel. Sadly, a little perspective proves this to be be just another solar flare of passion on the path to dormancy. As scenes like this Ferris wheel date are revisited, the women switch physical positions as if, even in this perfect moment, the mechanisms that will ultimately force them to bypass one another have already been set in motion. I chose this quote first because it brings up the label of marriage and labeling relationships and how society has deemed it so important to put these labels on relationships. And I think what the play is trying to argue is that maybe that's not the best way to go about this type of thing. That relationships are more fluid, feelings, emotions are more fluid, people change, people are not confined to the labels that we put on them, and the labels that we put on relationships. As I said, they're more fluid. And maybe marriage is something that needs to be revisited or revised in our culture. My third piece of evidence is a quote from the play. This is on page 27. It's a series of lines between Vicky and Erica. Vicky says, I'm black. Erica responds, I noticed. First, and you're a woman. Second, and a lesbian. I hate that label, but yes. It's not really a sequential thing. You're all those things. But I'm black first. Okay then. I can't not be black. I can't not be gay. On the inside, but on the outside you can be. It's not a choice. I chose this series of quotes, this series of lines, because it addresses several labels that define both Erica and Vicky on different levels and to different degrees. These lines bring up the labels of race, the labels of gender, the labels of sexuality, and it brings up how some of these labels are more external and some of them are more internal. And some of them can kind of be more easily hidden if one chose to do that. Whereas other things you can't really hide even if you wanted to. And 
This quote also addresses the power of directly labeling another person, especially in an intimate relationship, and what that does to the person labeling, the person being labeled, and then the dynamic between the two of them. A preview of the dialogue question I'd like you to ponder for this theme is, what labels do Erica and Vicky share and not share, and how do those same and different labels uniquely affect each woman? My second theme I'd like to move into now is the butterfly effect, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. It's the idea that a small flap of a butterfly wing on one side of the earth can cause a tsunami on the other side. So my first piece of evidence comes from Dan Jakes, his review for the Chicago Reader, the gripping bright half-life shows small choices with cataclysmic consequences. Jakes writes, Bright half-life puts a magnifying glass on the seemingly small choices and interactions that can cause cataclysmic life transformations down the road. As the play darts back and forth over the years, audiences are prompted to imagine for themselves how much heartache could have been avoided if one phrase had been uttered with a little less malice. And what is it about one particular night that rekindles a waning flame? I chose this quote because it brings up the nonlinear structure of the play and how it serves this theme of small action having major consequences. It also poses some really interesting questions to ponder. Uh, the many what ifs of the play, as well as the many what ifs of our own lives. And I love how the play bounces around so much, revisiting uh, scenes over and over again and how that then leads into a different scene from a different point in time and revealing these little Easter eggs of information as we go along the way so that the audience can ponder these questions that Dan Jakes poses and then come to their own conclusions about, oh, so this led to that and that led to this. It's really interesting. <laughs> My second piece of evidence comes from Alexis Solosky's review for the New York Times of Bright Half-Life, a two-woman play about by Tanya Barfield. Not about. <laughs> Solosky writes, most relationships develop in one of two ways. They endure or they don't. Miss Barfield's varied structure complicates this simple either or, showing the volatility in a long-term partnership, the joy and desolation, the hurt and help, all intermingled all at once. If these women, these maybe soulmates, could somehow suddenly see what the years will bring, would they still go out on that first date? That first date? <laughs> when the doors of the plane open, would they still jump? And I chose this quote because it first brings up this idea of fluid fluidity in relationships again, and in life in general. It also ties back to that idea of seemingly small choices in life, like going out on a first date, can lead to a wildly different narrative, a wildly different experience compared to what might happen had another path been chosen. And on the topic of paths in life, this quote points out that we don't know what the result of any one action will be, or could potentially be. We can think about the possibilities, but we will never know for sure unless we make the decision to live it. My third piece of evidence comes from the play itself on page 15. Erica says, I mean, the whole thing was like an ode to human achievement. What's possible? Like it had the potential to change everything, how we see everything. And then like, poof, that's it. And we just assumed they'd be in orbit. And now I think that's me too, because look what walking on the moon did for us, not just as a country, but us as a species. But now, poof, it's over. <laughs> I chose this quote because it really hones in on that idea of small actions having major consequences. It also brings up the idea of our perceptions of different things in life and how we, we sometimes blow up small things into these big proportions and how sometimes major things we even tone down into just brush it off, little small things. And it brings up how these perceptions of an event or a moment being big or small then informs how we handle them and how we go about them. And like Erica says, poof, it's over. It's just one moment. Why should we let 
this one moment define the rest of our lives or define uh, the rest of the, the world, per se. So the dialogue question I would like you to think about for this theme of the butterfly effect is, what choices or experiences proved most pivotal in Erica and Vicky's relationship? And how might their lives together change had those moments been different? The last theme I'd like to talk about is the universal life cycle of love. And my first piece of evidence comes from Curtis M. Wong for the Huffington Post. Tanya Barfield's Bright Half-Life traces a lesbian couple's relationship over 25 years. And this includes an interview with Tanya Barfield in which she says, for many years, I wanted to write a romantic story. At the same time, I find the saccharine narratives that so often come when we think of love stories utterly boring. I wanted to speak honestly and truthfully about a relationship with all of its highs and lows. I chose this quote because it brings in commentary directly from the playwright herself about her process while writing this play and her philosophy about what she wanted it to speak to. She talks about how she wanted to write a love story that doesn't fall into the stereotypes, but is still relatable and universal despite that. And I feel that she really achieves that with this play. My second piece of evidence comes from Chris Jones, a review for the Tr Chicago Tribune, a bright doomed relationship laid bare. And Jones writes, surely with intention, Barfield holds back on giving too many details of the women's lives, focusing instead on the fragile dynamics of their relationship, which is not so different, one quickly notices, from most other marriages or long-term partnerships. It is, a, it is a play designed for you to compare what you are watching with what you know, and so you do, whoever you may be. I chose this quote because it really taps into this theme of love being universal. Uh, race, gender, sexuality, none of that matters. Relationships that are platonic or romantic, that are short-term or long-term, they all go through the same ups and downs regardless of these things. We all experience these things with other people at some point or another in our lives. And I feel that Barfield really, really does a nice job of crafting this story between an interracial lesbian couple that is still so relatable to anyone, despite your race, despite your gender, despite your, your sexuality. We, as humans, are linked by our feelings, and that really shines through in her writing. So the last piece of evidence comes from the play, and it's another Erica line on page 63. She says, I don't want it to fade. I'd give you more than a life if I could, and I'm not supposed to say that because how long? How long have we been dating? Not that long, even though I just know. You might say you're young and you don't know what's a lifetime, but I'd give you days and nights, the sun, moon, and clouds on a string if I could. I chose this quote because it is such a raw expression of emotion in this moment. It's a feeling that I like to believe we all have at some point in our lives hopefully more than once, it puts into words what I believe we feel when we look at that special someone. And that special someone could be someone that we've known for our whole lives, for years and years, and it could be someone we even just met. And again, this is ex to experience this feeling of just knowing, regardless of race, regardless of gender, regardless of sexuality, human emotion connects us. We all feel the same things. So to preview the dialogue question I'd like you to think about, how does playwright Tanya Barfield achieve a universal love story in Bright Half-Life? And what moments in Erica and Vicky's love story did you personally relate to? So now I'd like to invite you to participate in this dialogue. And we'll start with the first question, the first theme, which was, uh, <laughs> blank me, it was, um, sorry, my brain is buffering. Labels. It was labels <laughs> and how they affect us. <laughs> and those questions.